Here's an example from the homework assignment where you want to find the proper subset of a set and also be able to find the general term for the proper subset in the original set. So let's look at the example where I have the set of the numbers containing 3, 6, 9, 12, and 15. So the first thing is to find the pattern that's happening from term to term. This is an addition pattern. So from 3 to 6, it's adding 3. 6 to 9, it's adding 3. And every time, it's adding 3. With an addition pattern, you find the number that it's adding, and you start by looking at the set 3 times n, where n is a number starting at 1. If the number, if the pattern was adding 4 each time, then you would start with 4n, or multiples of 4. So let's look at the 3n, and I'm going to write this above the original terms. So if the 3n set would consist of 3 times 1, which is 3, 3 times 2, which is 6, 3 times 3, which is 9, and 3 times 4, which is 12. Let me fix that there. So I get 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, and so on. So you want to take the, the formula you have here, and you want to list those elements, and I like to put it above the original set. And the reason why I do it above is going to be obvious in a little bit. Now I compare the numbers. So 3n gives me 3 first, and my set also has 3 first. So do I have to adjust my numbers to get to the original set? And you can see I don't have to adjust anything because they always match. So my general term for this original set is the formula 3n. The reason why we find a general term is it allows us to then jump to a term in the set. For instance, if I wanted to know what's the 50th term, and it's not really feasible for me to continue this pattern out to the 50th number, if I know the general term, then I know my n is 50. And so I would do 3 times 50, and I would get 150 would be the 50th term. Okay, so now let's find the proper subset. Now the textbook uses different ways. There's an infinite number of ways to find a proper subset. It just has to be a set that has less elements in it than the original set. So as long as you have fewer elements in it, you have to have the same elements, but you can't have all of them. It's a proper subset. So for this one here, I like to just start my proper subset with the next term. I leave off the first term. That way I ensure that it's smaller, and I'm also ensuring that I have the same elements. So I'm going to begin my proper subset with 6. 6, 9, 12, 15. The next one in the pattern then would be 18. So now I want to find the general term for my proper subset. Find out how much the numbers are going up by. This is finding the pattern, and it's adding 3 again. So I begin with 3n, and I put the multiples of 3 above the original set. So 3n is 3 times 1 is 3, 3 times 2 is 6, 3 times 3 is 9, 3 times 4 is 12, and that pattern continues. You can see this time my numbers aren't matching. So how do I adjust my numbers in the 3n formula so that they match the numbers in my set 6, 9, 12, 15, 18? Well, to go from 3 to 6, I add 3. From 6 to 9, I add 3. 9 to 12, I add 3. So if I start with 3n and add 3, I will get the elements in my proper subset, and therefore that is my general term formula. So for this 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, if I wanted to find what is the 50th term, then I would just plug in 50 for n. 3 times 50 plus 3 is 150 plus 3, or 153 would be the 50th term. 
Now let's look at a set that has fractions. So we have 5 over 1, 5 over 2, 5 over 3, 5 over 4, and 5 over 5, and the pattern continues. Now we have to investigate the pattern. So I can see that it is always a 5 on top. So when you have fractions, you kind of want to build your general term formula the same way. So my general term formula will also be a fraction. And if you have a constant number on the top or on the bottom, that constant number will fill in the fraction also. So I'm going to put a 5 on top. It's always a 5. Now the part that's changing is where the n goes. So I can see that it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It's changing on the bottom. Let's find the pattern in the denominators. How much is it going up by each time? Well, from 1 to 2, it's adding 1. 2 to 3, it's adding 1. So it's adding 1 each time. So remember, these addition patterns, we always start with the number that it's adding by. We multiply that by n. So I ha really have 1n. OK, so now we want to test this formula to see if it produces the numbers that are in the set. So I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to list the elements that would be in the set 5 over n. So I'm going to get rid of the 1, since that's not changing it. So you always start your n at 1. It's the first number in the set. So plugging in a 1 for n, I get 5 over 1 then I get 5 over 2, then I get 5 over 3, and so on. And you can see that these are matching the set. So my general term is 5 over n. Now my proper subset, the easiest way to find it, is to start at the next term. So I'm going to begin with 5 over 2, 5 over 3, 5 over 4, 5 over 5. Next would be 5 over 6. I'm going to begin this with the 5 over n formula again. You list the elements of 5 over n, and you always start n at 1. So it would be 5 over 1, 5 over 2, 5 over 3. You could see these denominators are not matching. So you want to compare the denominators and adjust it so that you can make it match. So how do I go from a 1 to a 2? I add 1. How do I go from 2 to 3? You add 1. So you're going to take your formula that you started with, 5 over n, and you're adding 1 to the n. This will produce the numbers in the set. So for instance, the first term is where n is 1. So I would have 5 over 1 plus 1, which gives me the 5 over 2. So that matches the first term.